Hi, Nick Houston here for Gotham Sound and Communications and GothamSound.tv. Here with Glenn Sanders from Zaxcom. Glenn, thanks for being here. Nick, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. I'm making the sure. trip from Jersey. Um, so you've brought uh, some new features on some existing hardware. Uh, tell us what you brought today. Well, what I have is our GUI bridge that has new software to control three different products. It controls the RX-8, which is our eight-channel receiver. It controls our wireless transmitters as well as our URX monitor receivers. It controls the RX-8 with simply an Ethernet connection. And then the GUI bridge connects to our camera link to control the transmitters and the URX receivers through RS-422. Got it. Okay, so just to quickly show the connections on the back of the GUI bridge for uh, people who not may not be familiar, uh, looks like we've got some USB, we've got the Ethernet, and we also have a couple of HDMI ports. Correct. Looks a lot like a Pi to me. Uh-huh, it does look like a Pi. We'll get into that later, but so basically like... There is, uh, there's Wi-Fi built in, right? So Absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's a web server built in. So mm -hmm. not only can you control everything through an interface that would use a mouse and a keyboard if you want to do that, and you can do it by plugging in an HDMI monitor, but you also have control from any wireless device through the web server. So you're able to do it with iPads, iPhones, any, anything with a browser can Got do it. it. Okay, so now we see um, on the monitor behind me um, that we actually have this web interface set up and we're using it on this iPad here. Um, so why don't you walk us through uh, what's going on? And uh, to be clear, um, when you say the RX-8, it's not just one RX-8, it can be multiple. That is correct. I believe we can handle at least six RX-8s simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So you could have an RX-48 if you wanted to. You could have 48 channels under control, that is correct. Uh, right now, we're showing control of a single RX-8 uh, screen. It says RX-8 number one. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that, I have two of the receivers dialed into my hanging transmitter here. Mm -hmm. So we can see uh, see some of the meters. One receiver is in dual mode, and that's why it has two meters going. And another receiver is in single mode. And we're able to control all the parameters of it. We're able to change frequency very easily. I just touch the screen, and it brings it up, and I can go into the frequency menu and type a new frequency in. So really quite quite simple to do that. I, uh, I can also control whether the uh, receivers are in single mode, dual mode, what modulation they're able to receive. So it's quite comprehensive. And of course, it's doing this over the same ethernet cable that the Dante sound is going through. Mm -hmm. So you're not running multiple cables out to your RX-8 and you could put a switch in uh, at the far end and hook up any number of RX-8s, mm -hmm. and, and that's going to that's gonna work great. Got it. And so in terms of, so you change the receiver frequency on the RX-8 using the GUI bridge, and if you have the camera link set up, it'll automatically change the paired transmitter. Correct. You can plug the camera link into the RX-8 that's remoted, you know, on you know, on stage or on, on set, whatever it happens to be. And when you change the receiver, it's going to change the transmitter as well. Mm. So we also can take the camera link transmitter, plug it directly into the GUI bridge, and then go into the transmitter menu page mm -hmm. through the web interface and control the transmitters directly. So, you know, how we do it is uh, depending upon your setup, so to speak, how you want to hook it up. But the idea is that if you're going to put an RX-8 on set, you're going to put a camera link transmitter on set, you're able to do all this control remotely and not have to go out and start doing things on set. Got it. Okay. And so, you know, you mentioned talking, uh, typing in uh, specific frequencies. Is there a, um, a future interface plan to do scanning and, uh, you know, having a frequency list and things like that? Yes. We certainly... Uh, are going to have a scan that you can do remotely. Right now it's just done locally. Mm -hmm. But we're also putting in things like frequency uh, keep keep away, so to speak, so that if you have certain frequencies that are maybe allocated to wireless that are not in the system, the system can say, okay, 
I'm going to stay away from this frequency and I'll, I'll give it a little range so that I can uh, not be on top of that. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that going forward that we put more into the frequency selection than just simply the information that we get by doing a frequency scan. Mm -hmm. We want it to be uh, as intelligent as it can be. One would say almost artificially intelligent. <laughs> oh, no, my. Hot button. Yes. Hot button. Okay. Um, so, and so the GUI bridge is the web server um, and is interpreting all the data that's coming from the RX-8. So the RX-8 is doing the, the changing and the outputting and things like that, but the GUI bridge is how you actually connect an interface. That's right. We call it a GUI bridge, mm -hmm. graphical user interface bridge. And yes, it's running a web server. And the beautiful part about it is we can just simply add things to it at any time. So there will be things coming uh, in the future for that. And I think that that's uh, a good thing. It's not an expensive device to have. Mm -hmm. The other thing about the GUI bridge is where you locate it is kind of an interesting thing. You can have it on the sound cart, and that's going to give you control through your cell phone or iPad or whatever locally. But also you could have it out on the set if you mm -hmm. wanted to position it there. So there's there's a lot of flexibility in the system because the web server is different. It's not built into the RX-8. And of course, if you're going to use it for transmitter control or URX control, you might not even have uh, RX-8s around. Mm -hmm. So um, using the system is really user defined, which I think is a very good thing. Yeah, so let's talk about the other um the other uses that are previously existing, but I don't think we've gone over here on this channel. Sure. Well, what I'd like to do is just simply go into the menu for those things. So I'll go into the menu for our URXs. The URX is our UHF monitor receiver, and there's two flavors of that. There's the URX50, URX100. One's a little higher end than the other. The URX100 has a walkie-talkie interface. Mm -hmm. And the great part about this system is you've got complete remote control of that system mm -hmm. from here. So you can do things like enable individual receivers to receive certain transmitters or not receive certain transmitters. You're able to put delay on channels or not put delay. So really you've got a situation where you've got a completely controllable system, but you don't have to go out and grab the thing and control it, mm. uh, you know, by pressing buttons or what have you. In fact, let's say you had 30 URXs out there, you're able to simply change the frequency on the transmitter, let's say at the sound cart, mm -hmm. and it's going to send out a message to the URXs saying, hey, I'm going to new frequency. Mm -hmm. So all of you, anyone who's listening, follow along, and it'll do that. Mm. So. Remote controlling the system is really simple. And I'll show you a few of the things that we can do here. Sure. Uh, for instance, if I go to my frequency select list, I can look at eight URXs that I happen to have out. Now I can also make this many, many more. I think mm -hmm. I can make it up to 100. But I have the system right now configured for eight. And all I have to do is touch one of the, uh, the icons on the screen and then I'm able to change the frequencies dynamically in terms of what a unit is able to listen to. Mm. I'm also able to tell it, are you allowed to have delay on this channel mm -hmm. or not have delay? I could even set up duplicate frequencies for someone remotely mm -hmm. and have one frequency with delay and one frequency without. And because of the same frequency, you're just switching the delay off and on. Right. But it makes it really easy for you know people on set to have a choice of what they want to do and for you to configure that remotely. Mm -hmm. So really pretty cool. So this is the menu where you would select the frequencies available. I'm able to name my receivers mm -hmm. so that I know what I'm what I'm controlling and they know who they're who they're associated with, which is quite good. We have a function called find me for the URX 50s where in this menu, you're able to find a lost transmitter because those, I'm sorry, lost receiver, because they have speakers in them. So you're able to enable that here. So if it's out on set somewhere, if someone set it down and walked away from it, it'll start making a relatively loud noise. Mm. So you can say, oh, okay, well, I, I can find that. So that's a cool feature we have here. 
There's a med headphone monitoring menu, so you can decide how, the, how on each channel things are monitored. For instance, you might have a walkie-talkie plugged into the monitor receiver, mm -hmm. and here you can configure it so that walkie maybe goes to the right earphone where the program audio would go mono to both. Yeah. So you get to deal with that routing in this menu and remotely, which is great. You could also assign the frequencies to the system here. Mm -hmm. And when you assign these frequencies, these are eight channels currently. I mean, there can be many more. Sure. But these are eight channels that are available to all of the receivers. Mm -hmm. So if I go into a receiver and I change frequency, I can actually change the frequency on that channel selection in all of the URXs at one time. Uh-huh, okay. So again, very, very versatile and, you know, it ends the management nightmare. And I use the word nightmare mm -hmm. because it can be. Yep. Yeah, you know, because using, using systems that don't have this capability, if you have to change your transmitter frequency and you have to refreak, you know, 20, 30 receivers on a show, that's a big deal. And this just does the, that function without any of the headache of doing it without something like this. So really a great thing. Yeah, and and uh, just thinking about where this is useful. I mean, obviously for uh, you know for thirds who are doing a lot of wiring, or for A twos, you know, to be able to take a full fledged UHF receiver that's receiving you know full spectrum Zaxcom and be able to confidence monitor and check lobs before they send somebody out to set, rather than having to you know walk you back to control or to a cart to have somebody listen while maybe there's a take or who knows. Um, you know, that's very helpful, but also in, you know, in reality, um, producers love to be able to dial into one person and say like, I want right. to hear so-and-so's mic. And this really gives them a lot of flexibility in terms of doing that. Oh yeah. I mean, with this system and I don't know if we're the only ones doing it, but you have complete ability to monitor anything, mm -hmm. anytime you want, you know, provided you've got the permission to do it. So if you want to if you want to let a dialogue coach monitor just the actor that they're working with, mm -hmm. if you want them to monitor the main feed off the sound card, whatever you want to do, uh, you can do with this without limitation. So, you know, I think pretty, pretty extraordinary. I don't know of any, any system quite like this. And this, uh, this software, which was the first application of the GUI bridge, I think we really went and made sure that, you know, it was just totally versatile and uh, really quite simple to use. So just to, to really drive this home, because we lightly touched on it, so this GUI bridge is serving up a, a website that can be controlled from anything. So, you know, the this iPad, you have it on your phone there. I do have it on my phone. Mm -hmm. And right now it's, uh, it's great because I don't have to be doing the same thing at the same time as the local screen. So right now I'm on my URX settings and I'm... Uh, I'm in the main menu where right now on the local panel that would be hooked up through HDMI, I'm on a different screen. So while, let's say, a sound mixer at a cart could actually be making transmitter adjustments, someone with a remote thing like mm -hmm. their phone could actually be doing RX-8 mm -hmm. if they wanted to do that. So it's uh, everyone can be doing something different all the time. Yeah. And that that's pretty cool. And it is password protected, so you can... To oh. get on the Wi-Fi, yeah, no, no one's going to get in and start messing with your transmitters or what have you. They have to know the password. Yeah, got it. And yeah. so, uh, speaking of transmitters, um, there is a transmitter control page as well. Absolutely. So if we go home here, I can go into the URX TX page and go to mm -hmm. TX, and now I'm in the transmitter page, and in the transmitter page, I've got the ability to go to any transmitter, and I currently have ten of them selected. Mm -hmm. And I can just select any transmitter and I can control the gain, you know, basically of any transmitter. So that mm -hmm. that's pretty neat. As far as the frequencies go, I can select a transmitter, change its frequency. I can also select a transmitter and give it a name. Mm -hmm. And if I give it a name and you've got the URX receivers, they will display the name of the transmitter that they are monitoring. Because not only do transmitters transmit audio, they do transmit metadata along with that audio mm -hmm. on UHF. 
Got it. So, so it, it makes it easy to know who you were listening to. You just look down and say, oh, yeah, it's Meowth. Absolutely. I think, mm -hmm. I think the URX is one of the few, uh, if maybe the only, uh, IFB receiver that has a display that gives you that kind of information. Mm -hmm. It also shows you the time code as well. So it's great for script supervisors or anyone that can just look at the top of their monitor receiver and get an exact subframe accurate time code display. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Um, I feel like we've gotten through most of the features. Is there anything that I'm missing that you feel like you want to say before we kind of wrap up? Um, not much. Um, basically, the GUI bridge is something, it's a work in progress in mm -hmm. terms of things that we're adding and features and products that we'll work with. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what you're getting today is you're getting control over the three different types of products, the RX-8 receiver, the transmitters, and the URX receivers. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest point that I can make in terms of the RX-8 is that control is over Dante, and it's just one cable to the receiver. Mm. That's it, Yeah. in terms of audio and control, which I think can be a pretty big deal, because no one wants to lug around multiple sets of cables to do different things with the same box. I mean, with this, it's really e easy. And also, you can power the RX-8 over power over Ethernet as well. Got it. And the, the other thing, just to, to touch on the Raspberry Pi, I mean, so this is a... For people who are, you know, familiar with Raspberry Pi, there's a lot of options out there for people who want to tinker. Not that that's something that we're encouraging, but it's something that's interesting. But it's basically, it's a Raspberry Pi board that's been baked with Zaxcom software. Well, that's right. When you buy the Raspberry Pi from us, you get the software. And, you know, we, we don't supply the software to Raspberry Pis that didn't come from us. Mm -hmm. And also, we have custom hard, a little bit of custom hardware in here, because we have to have that custom hardware to do the RS, uh, do the RS four twenty two output. Mm -hmm. So, you know, basically, you buy it, you get the software. If people want to monkey around with the software at that point, they're free to. But certainly, that that could present uh, issues if you don't quite know what you're doing with it. Mm -hmm. So. There you go. Very cool. All right. So uh, so the new news is the RX-8 compatibility with the GUI bridge, a.k.a. ZGB, and new software that should be available very soon, early June 2023. Absolutely, yeah. We have we have beta software out now, and we'll, we'll make it official quite quickly. Cool. So if you already have the GUI bridge, uh, check out zaxcom.com to download the latest software. Put the, uh, put the update in, and you'll have all these features we talked about today. Indeed. All right. Glenn, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Nick. And thank you all for watching. Um, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and TikTok. Uh, you can also email us at info at gothamsound.com with any questions or ideas for future videos. And if you'd like, you can watch this video again or any of our other video content at gothamsound.tv. Thank you and have a good one.